Coming up next, it's a UFC heavyweight division collision. All right, crowd getting excited as this fight gets underway, and you hate to call any fighter on this UFC roster a specialist, but on one side, you have a definite striker taking on a true 5 to fight. Can you see a guy in the striker who knows exactly who he is? He knows where the fight needs to be. He knows what he has to do in order to be successful. Let's see if he can keep his opponent off of him. Working off of his back here. Looks like he may try to hip escape. He's putting him in exactly the positions he needs to be in right now. He's able to relax here. And he understands, being a veteran of so many fights, that as long as he's on top, he's winning. He feels like he's winning here. The Kimura is not the arm. It's the shoulder pressure that usually makes you tap. And this might just be a matter of time. Brilliant submission defense there. All right, full guard here, DC. What does he need to do to improve position? Well, he's got to start to build his posture, get some damage off, move the half guard, which in turn leads to more opportunities for advantage. But if you're on the bottom, you've got to anticipate those movements the moment he tries to move to the next position. You build a shield, get back to your feet, or dig an underhook to try to get a reversal or a sweep. Good series of strikes for him there, staying busy and staying accurate. I mean, the accuracy is unbelievable. Oh, big punch lands. Oh, big knee to the body, man alive! An uppercut landed! Oh, man, is he on point tonight. Another big knee. Knee to the body. Now goes in and secures the takedown. All right, so you gotta be careful playing on the ground with this guy. You don't wanna mess around for too long. Now he's gonna try to attack Kimura here. The Kimura's not the arm. It's the shoulder pressure that usually makes you tap. But now DC trying to isolate an arm. Yep, he's using the Kimura. All right, bottom fighter here, maybe looking to hip escape, DC. All right, dominant position for him here, full mount. If you're the bottom fighter, you better start moving those hips. Potentially working on a leg attack here, DC. It looks like he's attacking a heel hook. So he's sort of turtled up here. Not great body language. Perhaps he's trying to bait him in a little bit. Side control now. 
All right, he's trying to control posture here. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. There was a lead elbow. And so he's mixing everything up. Close guard here. He's very comfortable here working off of his back, DC. And now he's in the guillotine. Okay, now he can escape. Oh, nice job to reverse position on the ground. It was bad, but now it's not so bad. What a fantastic sweep. Under two minutes now to go in round two. Looks like he's trying to isolate an arm here, DC. Yeah, he's isolating it to try to get a Kimura here. The Kimura is not the arm, it's the shoulder pressure that usually makes you tap. Oh, now he's in trouble. Oh, oh there's the tap. He got the finish. What a beautiful Kimura finish by this great fight. And I don't care how high your threshold is for pain. When you're in that compromised state, better to tap and fight another guy. It's so crazy because people think the pressure's on your arm. It's all your shoulder. When somebody has a really good Kimura, it feels like they're gonna break your shoulder. The official decision is in. All right, coming up next, it's a light heavyweight matchup between Jan Blachowicz and Daniel Cormier. All right, here we are back in Montreal at the Bell Center, and with, and with respect to all of the MMA fans globally around the world, for my money, this is the loudest venue I have ever heard for a UFC match. If they say that the United Center is the home that MJ built, this is George St. Pierre's home, the Bell Center in Montreal. And I'm telling you, man, when the hometown boy hits the curtain, these people go crazy. This is a phenomenal fight environment. That was a nice fight. All right, first round is underway here. We say in mixed martial arts, it's one thing to have the reach advantage, it's another thing to use it. We'll see if he can get that jab going. He has got to fight tall. He's got to stay at range, use his length to give his opponent problems, trying to bring the fight into a closer distance. Ooh. You take more of these leg kicks, you will not be able to be very active on your feet. Blahovich gets hit by that kick to the midsection. You gotta do better defensively. Big punch lands over the top. How's he gonna follow this one? Mixes it up nicely in terms of staying heavy and also staying active. So just over 20 total strikes have now landed for you, DC. so much about the wrestling. Don't sleep on those hands. Yeah, but it's because of the wrestling that allows these guys to... So, again, DC, he's rocked. That was a beautiful hook. It landed perfectly. And it hurt it. Oh! Woo! 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 
Again, the winner here was so aggressive with his onslaught. He wanted to make sure he kept the judges out of the equation. Mission accomplished on that front as he gets the TKO victory here tonight. I mean, just landed that beautiful kick right under the rib. You can see immediately the effect that it took on his opponent as his opponent went back to the edge of the octagon, fell down to the ground, and he finished the fight. So a massive TKO win for him here tonight. Bruce Buffer has the official. To All right, coming up next, it's a UFC heavyweight showdown. Ready? Ready? Let's go. All right, so here we are back at the O2 Arena, London, England. We were not here when Leon Edwards confronted Jorge Masvidal backstage, the whole three-piece episode of it, but we're happy to be here tonight. Leon Edwards approached him, and he got a feel that he was not expecting. Let me tell you something, man. When you're in the arena, when you're in the O2 Arena, you better be ready to fight backstage or inside the octagon. All right, early round one. We'll see if he can use that jab and try to keep his opponent on the outside. Must be nice for these long fighters, huh? I mean, they are able to touch you as you try to enter into range. Tonight, he needs to use his jab, use his kicks to hit his opponent before his opponent can get into range and even start to think about striking. His leg is hurt here. You can see him limping a little bit. Oh, how about that? He lands a huge kick. Much improved defensively as he blocks the shot. Oh, he lands a huge knee to the body. He loaded up there on that high kick. Big knee. And he switches to south. Big punch lands over the top. How's he going to follow this one up? Well, he continues to do a nice job here defensively protecting the head and sort of maybe letting his opponent gas out a little bit with all the volume. His opponent sees the target, but he can't get to the target. So he'll continue to throw, and he'll continue to wear on his own gas tank. Oh, that's a big hook to the chin. Look at him whip his hip into that kick. He's trying to establish that jab once again. Look at him drive his shin into his own body with that body kick. Came of inches right there, boy. Wow. It was a good night if that landed. Inside his hook now. He turned his entire body into that uppercut, and it landed exactly as he was hoping for. So he's really starting to put together some significant body shots here. These are going to take their toll as this fight goes on. Nice jab, follows it up with a nice right hand. Oh, the kick.
kickboxing chops on full display with that offering. Nicely done. Beautiful kick landed by this man. Big body kick. Jones' shot is blocked. And that he comes knee, through with a big knee. That knee hurt him. Knee to the body. Horn sounds for the end of round one. Second round here. Look at the turn in that kick. Yes, they heard him in the last round. Same exact one. Oh, nice connection with that punch. It's one thing to have an edge in reach. It's another to take advantage. Nicely done. That's a big strike right there. How about that shin? Liver kick, if you take those kicks, it's gonna shut your body off. Nice leg kick land. Oh! Oh! Diggy kick. Well, he's doing a nice job here blocking these shots. The chin is tucked, the hands are high. Pretty good job defensively thus far. Great job defensively. He's seeing everything coming. Oh, he lands another strike to the body, really starting to connect on a lot of shots to the midsection. And these will take their toll as this fight goes into the latter rounds. Big knee there to the chest. Oh! Very tricky when he throws that body kick. And that one was heavy. Man, the body work really starting to take its toll here. Obvious redness on that right side. Oh, and again, another big knee. He ate that kick. He took that whole kick, yep. Well, he's really starting to land a high number of strikes here in the second round. No denying that he has taken the message from his corner and picked up the pace here in round two. Oh, oh, he, he, he's, a he's hurt bad. Big knee to the body. All right, so a nice shot there defensively to raise the guard and prevent any damage. Those hands never leave where they're supposed to be. And if you do that, most times you will block the shot that's incoming. Look at him working at trying to shut the liver down. Great punch landing with so much power. Jones gets absolutely pelted by that head kick. 20 seconds left. Way to hide that leg kick. Oh. Oh. How about those five minutes? All right, let us now look back at some of the replays from that previous round, DC. All right, all right, calm down. Let's go, The kill shot is what they call it to go and end the fight. You wonder if the offensive fighter is going to start to get frustrated here. Most skipped on all these shots are getting blocked. They're getting blocked because he's fighting one of the best defensive fighters in the UFC. Well, he hasn't really showed any signs of slowing down tonight. He continues to connect on a high volume of strikes here. Liver kick. Nice offering there with the knee. He talked to us a lot about that on Thursday. Felt like the knees would be there. It was certainly there on that exchange. He knew they would be available. He just knew he would have to find the right opportunity and right time to land those strikes. 
Well, he's got the longer reach, and he certainly showed it there in landing that straight punch. Jones's lower jaw now starting to show signs of swelling. Ooh, big shot lands. A lot of different looks. He switches to southpaw now. Back to orthodox. Oh, big right hand, yes. Real speed by the kid. Oh, continuing to work the body to great effect. Big knee there. Under the elbow. Real nice body kick land. Oh, nice connection there by John Jones, and he is fighting with a definite killer instinct here tonight, DC. And you have to have it because the targets. Oh. After that offering, DC, he is hurt. What a beautiful uppercut. It landed beautifully. Perfect placement on that shot. Oh, he might be out. He's got a great feel for the striking realm early in this one. The timing is on point. He's doing a great job of mixing everything up. Oh, man, that left side is getting beat up now. Look at the redness there. Oh! He needs to start looking to finish now because he's got his opponent hurt very bad. Well, you've got to admire the urgency here. He is trying to keep the judges out of it. Lighten up his opponent left and right. Over and over, he landed a big body kick. Jones's head kick is blocked, so no damage inflicted there. Nice right hand. Big knee lands there. So the fight goes the distance as we await the judges' scorecards, but certainly a dominant striking effort out of that fighter tonight. John, he used his best weapons in order to carry him. To All right, it looks like the official decision is in. Yes, here's Bruce Buff. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for decision. All three judges score the contest. 29-28. Declaring the winner by unanimous decision, Tom! Congratulations to him. He is your winner by unanimous decision and certainly a dominant performance here tonight. Yeah, he did a great job of just dictating and controlling all the engagements of this fight. His opponent never really had an opportunity to lead the dance. He did that from start to finish, and he wins a unanimous decision.